Good afternoon ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for clicking that button and joining me for today's video. I hope you're all well. Now, for you guys that are following me on my YouTube community tab or on the Instagram platform, you will see I have very recently just picked up a very shiny and very bitey axe. Today guys, I would like to share with you and talk to you a little bit about my new Norden N10 chopping axe from Fiskars. Thanks largely to Finnish craftsmanship, Fiskars has come a long way since it was founded as an ironworks in 1649. Today it is one of the oldest companies in the western world. It all started in 1649 when Peter Thwars was given a charter to establish a blast furnace and forging operation in the small village of Fiskars. In 1783 the ironworks was taken over by the Bjorkman family and production focused on processing copper ore from the nearby copper mine. As of today, Fiskars specialise in kitchen cookware, scissors, garden tools, arboreal, woodland and forestry implements. Now ladies and gents, when it comes to the Fiskars axes, I am glad to report I do have a lot of previous experience using these types of axes, as I was the proud owner of the Fiskars X10 in the trademarked Fiskars Orange um, axe for many many years as my main bushcraft axe. Now guys, I have been asked very recently to start looking at more budget friendly gear on the channel. And this is about as budget as I am willing to go on an axe without compromising reliability, performance and functionality. If you do follow the channel, you'll know I own the Grand Force Brook Small Forest Axe and that is a £140 um, axe here in the UK. I wouldn't say this is particularly um, budget friendly, this is still £60 um, if you hunt around. But I know from past experience that this axe will see me well in a woodland environment. And I'm absolutely devastated because I have literally just touched the top of my glove with the axe. And you can see I've got a nice slice in there now. Brand new pair, only being used today. <laughs> but that just goes to show how sharp these axes are. Bugger. Damn my superior sharpening skills. Right, ladies and gents, the axe mask is back on there just so I don't decapitate my nose. Well, let's go through a couple of the specs on the axe now. So, attached to the mask, you get a lovely little um, booklet. All sorts of information in there. Some nice glossy pictures. Um, that sort of stuff. So, going over the anatomy of the axe now. Starting with the top, we have the plastic reinforced mask or face guard there. And that just protects you from that ultra, ultra silly sharp bit. So, we'll put the axe down very, very lightly. And um, so... Not one of its best features, again being plastic, not very appealing, but it does serve a purpose and it is highly functional. Um, it does have the carry handle on the top, but this can be replaced over in the UK with a leather variant costing around £17. So I probably will be picking that up in the future, but for the meantime, this will do the job. And onto the axe itself, starting from the top, we have a high carbon steel forged head with a precision ground 10cm chopping surface. Um, it does have a Teflon coating on the face of the axe just to stop that sticking in the wood. I have removed that along the cutting edge there just to give that the best performance. On the back we have a hammering pole. And the head is wrapped in Fiskars proprietary um, glass reinforced fibre comp. And this makes this axe nylon indestructible. On the end series they have opted for a quality hickory haft measuring 35.5 centimetres. Um, and this just gives it, in my opinion, a nice air of quality and definitely makes it more appealing in this sort of setting. The grain isn't half bad on there either. Very nice. The axe itself weighs in at 1.2 kilo or 2.6 pounds or 42.3 ounce. And it has an overall length of around 55.5 centimetres. Now guys and girls, let's go over some of the cutting tools pros and some of its features that actually appeal to me on the get-go. So first of all, we've got the overall length of this cutting tool. Suggests this is more of a hatchet than an axe. And again, with its smaller size, this should make for a nice one-handed chopping tool. There is enough length on the haft for the handle for two-handed use for kindling processing, should you need to. And at the base of that handle, we have that nice pronounced fawn's foot, ensuring that that handle is not going to slip out of your hand during use. The N10 hatchet does feel more balanced than its predecessor, the X10. I think that comes down to the solid timber handle we have on this one. As opposed to the plastic fibre comp on the X10, which is hollow. Another major plus in the Fiskars' favour is the overall styling of the axe again. 
Um, this is very, very appealing, certainly to me, one of the reasons why I picked this up. Plus, knowing the performance of the I experienced of the X10, this was a no-brainer. And I have literally just been looking online to see the cheapest price for this. These can be had for as little as £45 on eBay, so get hunting about. Now, for the cons. And first one up, guys, is the plastic face mask itself. Now, this does an awesome job of keeping your fingers safe from that extremely sharp bit, but on the opposite end, it does eliminate the use of the pole on the back of the axe. Again, that can be eliminated by picking up one of the optional leather sheaths for this hatchet, so that could become a non-issue. Second of all, guys, is that razor sharp bit. Again, that can be brought up to an absolutely scalpel style edge. And with some proof, we just got a paper test here. Again, extremely, extremely sharp. Unfortunately, the edge retention qualities of the steel are not fantastic, and you'll find that razor sharp edge will not last you a day in the woods. It will need touching up at some point. And the possibilities are when you come to inspect that blade after probably a good few hours use chopping, uh, you will find lots of rolled edges along that bit. Good thing is though, I have never experienced chipping out of the blade. And to put a razor sharp edge back on this, it takes literally two or three minutes with a diamond stone or the Grandpa's Brook um, axe puck like I've got. Now you awesome folk. So, fun fact time. The plan and idea behind the Fiskars N10 hatchet today was to come out and actually build a bushcraft debris shelter using the hatchet as the main tool. Um, I have been building the shelter just off camera here and uh, reason being some pillock forgot to charge his camera this morning so I have been flitting between this and that waiting for the camera to charge up enough for me to use it. So we are now going to use the hatchet in the last steps of the shelter building process. Uh, we're going to make some stakes just to keep my uh, links on the shelter. And then we're going to process some kindling to make a nice fire to make a brew in the woods. So, let's crack on. Right guys and girls, so, time has gotten away from us once again. So I'm just going to point these stakes up to secure the roof on that shelter. I'm going to collect a little bit more material and then I'll, I'll show you what I've been doing off camera. So, let's crack on. I will say, as I've been using this hatchet uh, around the camp today it does lend itself to be a, a very nice little chopping axe so um, good little splitter as well but you can feel it is well much more balanced than the X10 with the X10 you do feel like the head is lunging forward a lot it's hard to control but with this with that weight in the handle it's proven to be a lot more controllable and a lot less fatiguing in the arm. Right guys, so this is the uh, debris shelter so far. It's a simple lean-to on a fallen ash um, and all the tile material, roof material has been found just around the woodland. So we're just going to use these stakes now to reinforce The uh, length's going across, just so they don't slip down. Right guys and girls, welcome to my highly flammable natural lean-to Deborah shelter. What do you think? I'm quite happy with that for an afternoon's work. I could have um, done a bit more with this side, I've closed it off best I can, but like I say, time's against us now. That side's open, but that could easily be closed up. And we've got a lot of brush there anyway, so that'll break up a lot of the wind coming through. But I can't see any light through the roof. So uh, hopefully I've got enough roof material on there. I will collect it and um, 
carry on with it as and when. But yeah, I'm happy with that. So it's not too large where you're going to lose all your heat. It is nice and low. It's definitely a lay down affair. But this should help retain some heat as well. Um, but yeah, structurally, it seems okay. Um, these are either seasoned or green. So they have got some strength in them. I do plan on coming out and building a few more shelters um, in the later months. It is a great pastime in spring and summer. Bit of carving, bit of shelter building. And I might take it down to where we usually go with the mossy stump. Because uh, there's quite a lot of hazel down there. And there's a lot of dead wood. And uh, we can build multiple shelters there and not be disturbed. So I look forward to that. But I'm definitely getting cramp in my neck. <laughs> well, yeah, not, not too bad. Well guys, just give you a quick look see inside. There we go. I think a light rain, you'd be safe in there. Pretty much sheltered. But yeah. So my fantastic crowd, the hatchet. For what I have used this for today, it has performed extremely well, which is no surprise. Again, I am no stranger to the Fiskars line of axes. Um, I was the proud owner of the Fiskars X10 as my main bushcraft axe for two years. And that is pretty much identical axe to this, apart from the hickory aft here, which I think has improved it no end. It's very appealing. And I will say this, if this was the only axe or hatchet I could have in my kit now, I wouldn't be disappointed. And I'll be happy to take that on all my travels. Upon inspection of the cutting edge there, I can see a few Flat spots where the light is reflecting. See a bit of disturbance along the edge. But again, two minutes with a diamond stone. And that is back up to shaving sharp. Fantastic axe, hatch it all around. Right, ladies and gents, I'm going to wrap the video up there. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I have definitely enjoyed being out building this little shelter. Um, I'm just spending time in the woods. It really does take you back to your childhood when you're doing things like this. I do plan on building a few more shelters of a varying styles over the coming months, so stay tuned to the channel for that. Right, my fantabulous lot, I have got a serious cramp in my side, so until the next one, you stay safe, and as always, stay crafty. See you again, guys. Bye-bye. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Watch the fanny. <laughs> oh.